Have you ever thought, what would it be like to open and run a Freddy Fazbear's Pizza in real life? We did, and it drove us kind of crazy, as this iconic horror game and now film location has so much lore that we can pair with real life business logic to make it a reality. Yep, you heard us correctly, we are going to use our business and Five Nights at Freddy knowledge to find out everything we can to build, run and open Freddy Fazbear's Pizza in 1988. And to do that, we need to start off with a good old lore dump to get you associated with all the information. If you're a Five Nights at Freddy's fan, you know there's an absolutely insane amount of lore associated with the game. So. As you can see from the length of this video, we're not diving into an 8 hour lore video, which I 100% applaud Gibby for doing. Instead though, we're going to focus on the first game's timeline. But it all began in 1983 in Hurricane Utah, when Henry Emily and William Afton became business partners. They both agreed to co-found the company known as Fazbear's Entertainment Inc. In the same year, they decided to open the franchise, Fredbear's Family Diner, sometime before 1983, then a second location in 1987 called Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and then a third Freddy Fazbear Pizza in 1988. We'll call it Freddy's or Fazbear's from now on. The 1988 location is where the first game, Five Nights at Freddy's, is set. But the game starts in 1993, where you play as the security guard, Mike Schmidt, who's trying to survive the roaming animatronics at night, as they cannot roam around during the day due to the bite of 87 in the second location. And due to that bite and bad business, among many other lore details, no one wants to purchase Freddy's, so they are forced to close later that year. But this is where I twist the lore and ask, what if the bite and all the other horrific details of Freddy's never happened? What if we treat this third location as another successful venture for Fazbear's Entertainment, and we're the ones employed to get it up and running? We're going to do everything we can to make it a reality. And where else better to start than the construction of Freddy's Fazbear's Pizza? Freddy's resembles the real-life American family entertainment center and pizza chain Showbiz Pizza Place from the 1980s that later merged into Chuck E. Cheese in 1994, which, luckily for us, is pretty much an identical timeline to the game. Therefore, there will be a lot of comparisons throughout this video, as it's a very clear inspiration for the game. And big thanks has to go to TESG for their FNAF fan game Fazbear's Nights, which allowed us to free roam the first location in 3D, which we learn a lot about the internals of that location. Using these resources of Showbiz Pizza Place, Chuck E. Cheese, and Fazbear's Nights, we can both look into the real and fictitious locations to find out what we need to know to build Freddy's. First of all, let's look into the modern equivalent of Showbiz Pizza Place, Chuck E. Cheese. So I began looking through Chuck E. Cheese marketing brochures to purchase one in 2023, and I found out that the average size is 10,000 square feet. And to help you visualize what 10,000 square feet looks like, Ryan's Flicker album shows the interior of a Chuck E. Cheese at that size. As you can see, there's arcades, the stage, table arrangement, eating area, everything you expect to see in a Fazbear's Pizzeria. And I wanted to be doubly sure, so I looked for a fan-made map by Sweet Memories, and I believe now that 10,000 square feet should be big enough. So now that we know that our Freddy's location is going to be 10,000 square feet, we can start building it. Now, building it from the ground up with using timber, stone, whatever we want to use it for would be an absolutely monumental task to figure out for material costs and all the other stuff in between to build a fresh building. So we just have to take the value of a new construction in 1988, which would be in this case 130854 which translates to $13.09 per square feet. So in total, Freddy's Pizza would cost 130900 well, there we have it. That's the cost to make the new building. But what about the interior? Well, I couldn't dig up any archival documents for any of that, so I do apologize, but we're going to have to leave the interior to magical powers from Fazbear's. But what we can talk about is the animatronics, which I know you've been dying to hear about. Let's dive straight into it, shall we? You know them, you've been scared by them, and now they're coming to life for real. I'm talking about, the, obviously, the fabulous four classic animatronics made in the 1980s, who are Freddy Fazbear, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. Now, you may be surprised that I don't have a robotics degree. Therefore, I have no idea how it, much it would cost to make these, especially if you wanted to keep it law-friendly and have them have small children's inside. And even if I did, I think googling the specifics to do so would get you in trouble. But due to our twist of the law, the bite didn't happen, and nor did the stuffing of corpses into the suits. But I thought, why not find out anyway? And thanks to a Reddit post who works with the animatronics in Chuck E. Cheese, they say sadly, no, a body, not even a child, will fit inside an animatronic. You could potentially try and attach the spirit to it. And then oddly says, maybe in the Chuck E. suit though. Please do not try and stuff yourself inside a Chucky suit. I repeat, do not try and stuff yourself in a Chucky suit. So where do we go from here? 
Well, we do know that the company, Creative Engineering, made the animatronics for Showbiz Pizza Place in the same time period, and thanks to their old PDF documents of the catalogue of their animatronics they sold to them, we can find the ones that fits the law the most. Within this catalogue, we find a stage called the Billy Bob Adventure Show for $86,950, and to customise it with Freddy's theme, it would be an additional $22,500. This show has four characters, which means we can have Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and the Puppet. If you know, you know. Foxy would have its own single stage for 54,900 and another custom pirate co theme for an additional 22,500. I think it's really cool to see that it could look like Freddy's stage with a re theme, and I think with the release of the first film, there's a chance we may see a Freddy's pizza pop up for a PR stunt for the sequel. That would be really, really cool. But I have to say though, that sadly these showbiz pizza place animatronics do not walk around as the technology at the time was limited and it would be far too expensive. So if we want to be law friendly, we would need to put a human in these suits, which would cost around $2,000. As you can see, it would fit the bill. Showbiz pizza place in the Evelyn Hill Shopping Center, Fayetteville. What I will point out though, is that Scott did his research on these animatronics because when you tear down the old Chuck E. Cheese and the new models, they look hauntingly similar and glitch out in the same creepy way. To conclude, to purchase all the animatronics for a 1980s Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and to re-theme them to make them look like the game, it would cost 186850 And let's say we purchase 8 suits for walking around for all those awesome pictures and hopefully no biting, and that's $16,000 for a grand total of 202850 and there you have it. That was literally the best cost analysis and research I could do for the animatronics to make look closest to the law. But if you know any better pricing or genuine supernatural robots that are cheaper than that, please let me know down in the comments. So what's next? Well, every pizzeria has expenses to run, but trust me, this is going to be the most fun cost analysis sheet you'll ever listen to. And if you don't enjoy it, I'll stuff you in a suit, all right? Here's what happened next. I dive into the operation manuals and financing documents for a showbiz pizza place, a 40 year old business, and realize that running a pizza is a lot harder than I thought and also very tedious. Let's start with running a show. That's really important, as those kids and their birthday parties are what's going to keep the place running. The whole reason you come to Freddy's is to watch the shows and eat pizza and hopefully not be munched on by an animatronic. Now, a showbiz pizza place monthly cost of free franchises documents it tells us that a show costs around $13,000. Not bad, but what about the workers? Well, you need to hire and pay them a minimum wage of $4.25 an hour in 1988 to wear the suits along with all the non-suit jobs. And where do you hire them from? Well, let's keep it law friendly and put it out an advert in the paper. And according to Fit Small Business, a 4 times 10 inch ad would cost $480 in 2023, which would be $193 in 1988. But considering this is Hurricane Utah, I think that is overpriced, seeing that it's in the middle of nowhere. So we'll say $50. And just in case these animatronics do become supernatural and choose to roam around at night, the security guard, Mike Schmidt, who gets $120 a week, would need to be hired. And in this case, he wouldn't be killed off. Then we have all the additional expenses, which Showbiz Pizza Place racked up $41,000, which does not include rent, property, or labor, as we built our location and we don't have a staff amount. Now we have all the expenses, let's add it all up and find out how much it's going to cost to run Freddy's a month. To start, it's 13k for the shows, 41k for all other expenses, $250 for 5 newspaper adverts, $420 for our security guard. And if we choose to get 20 staff at the same rate of $120 a week, we're in the ballpark of $63,000. So there you have it. I really hope that was the most interesting cost analysis spreadsheet you could find. But let's get into something which we know is our bread and butter, marketing. And it's the time of the grand opening. It's the new Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And we have to market in the age of no internet. So the key areas are going to be television, radio, newspaper, outdoor marketing, and yellow pages. And just saying Yellow Pages just made me feel really old because there's going to be people listening to this who have never heard of Yellow Pages before other than watching Stranger Things. Oh my god! I'm sorry for that. Um, back, back, to the, back to the video. Our goal is to stamp the Fazbear's Entertainment Inc. logo onto every single thing we put out. As a franchise's logo is what makes you recognizable from a street away or flicking through a newspaper. And if these numbers seem low to you, you should know this is just what franchises have to pay based on actual showbiz pizza archival documents. Corporate probably paid to make the ads, and they're probably splitting the bill of the cost to run them. I tried to find a little more detail on this point, but didn't have any luck. So let's begin with television. It's one of the key forms of advertising in the days of cable. This will cost $30.60 for a 1 to 30 second spot. 
we would show footage of the new venue from the outside and the internals of a previous venue showcasing the animatronics and revealing a new location opening in Hurricane, Utah. This would be a great opportunity to tell parents to book birthday parties as 5 to 12 year olds are going to be the key demographic. Next we have radio. This is cheaper as for a 1 to 60 second spot it's $5.90. Therefore multiple radio spots will be commissioned leading up to the grand opening. This will include the owner William Afton and Henry Emily talking about the new venue telling you why you should come. Then we can play some b-roll showcasing all the things you can do at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Play the arcade, eat pizza, meet the animatronics, don't get bit, you know that kind of stuff. Moving on to newspapers and yellow pages, these would vary in price due to size. The big ones you'd have the entire gang of animatronics having fun, eating pizza, showing off a really entertainment vibe. For the small ones you could have each individual character saying things like their catchphrases or eating their pizza, telling you there's low prices to see the world's greatest animated shows and the same would be done for billboards for bigger which would cost $50. Now how much would that be a month? Let's say we do 4 TV spots a week which would cost $489, the same for radio at $94 and we'll get 3 large billboards done for $150. And then about 60 newspaper adverts said $25 should we say if we're considering all the sizes of $400. Now let's add that all up. $489 for 4 TV spots a week, $94 for 4 radio spots a week, $400 for 4 newspaper slots, and $150 for 3 billboards for a grand total of $1,133 a month to do advertising. Now comes the time to find out how much it all costs together. The location would cost $130,900. The animatronics cost $202,850, the expenses to run is $64,000 and $1,130 to market Fazbear's for a grand total of rounding up $400,000. Were we correct or were we completely wrong? I don't know, but I had fun figuring out all this stuff, reading through old documents, going somewhat crazy trying to figure this all out for you, and I really hope you've had as much fun as I have. And if you're interested in a second video talking about how you'd handle the marketing, PR, and the possible legal ramifications of the bite of 87, then please let us know down in the comment section below. And I'll leave you with this. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. If you loved it, give us a subscribe. And if you want to know more about our videos when they come out, hit that bell button to get notified.